Hi everybody, today I have a special guest. Hello. Guys, this is Riley, my fiance. I'm Riley, the fiance. Riley's not into ASMR, but she is so supportive and has been practicing her ASMR voice. So we thought it'd be fun for her to join today and we're going to talk about... RuPaul's Drag Race. The best looks. The best looks of RuPaul's Drag Race. This is a really impromptu video. It's not very planned. We're just going to be going through a Vulture article. The 100 Greatest RuPaul's Drag Race Looks of All Time. It's written by Bowen Yang and Matt Rogers. <gasps> oh my god. From Las Culturistas and Bowen Yang of SNL. Is this, this, am I doing a good job? Yeah, but what, okay. you're you're a little quiet. Talk like soft spoken. I I only have two, like la like voice levels. Sound. Yeah, and it's whisper or or scream. <laughs> you definitely you know how to talk like talk like this. You know, like if you're like talk if like you're this. talking like, quietly, like, like, like we're in a library. Exactly. Sorry if you hear crying. Our dog um, has separation anxiety, even though he's. Five feet away. It's too far. It's too far. So, we love RuPaul's Drag Race. When I first started dating Riley four years ago, I had never watched it. But um, now, Riley and I could be judges on the show, don't you think? I think we're more qualified than some of the guest judges on I the agree. show. I agree. I think we. I think we have a pretty good knowledge. We're of definitely more qualified than Brooklyn Heights. I started watching Drag Race um, my junior year of college. I think that was season five, maybe. I think Drag Race is so appealing to me because I like reality shows. Mm -hmm. And I, I like reality competition shows. But I only want to watch ones with queer people. <laughs> like, I'm mostly interested in the lives and there aren't of that queer many. people. No. Like, I remember watching America's Next Top Model. And being so stoked over Kim. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this is a queer person on TV. And then I yeah. watched like A Shot of Love, A Shot of Love with Tila Tequila, who's a <laughs> neo Nazi. So. I love Drag Race for a lot of reasons, but I think what initially like made me love it so much is the clothing. Like mm. in the earlier seasons, it's rough. But as well, the show was different. Then. The show is very different. The expectations were. Totally but as different. the scenes have progressed, the fashion has become so interesting and yeah. really elevated in a lot of ways. Like it's high fashion. It's changed fashion. Yeah. It's changed like culture. And I loved I love Drag Race because also like <clears throat> once you start learning more about like drag queen culture you'll find that there are like so many different types of queens and previously like queens i think were typically more pageant like and 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 more like um off the rack like mm -hmm. it was more about female impersonation on the show right than it was about like being a, a character almost or like a character of yourself right and now i feel like it's not, I feel like a lot more queens are experimenting with their style yeah. and there's so much gender bending and like interesting plays on culture that people use with clothing. So today we're going to explore some of the best outfits of RuPaul's Drag Race and if you've never experienced Drag Race before, you're in for um, a surprise. <laughs> Our favorite RuPaul's Drag Race outfits. The clothing. Let's go. Oh. You think of Drag Race best fashion. What immediately pops into your head? Okay, based on what I think or what, like, the legacy of RuPaul's Drag Race No, thinks. based on what you think. There's a few. I would say Valentina is probably like who I think of as the most 
like commercial slash no, like no, high fashion. No, you're overthinking this. I just want to know who's your favorite. Just one word. Yeah, just right off the bat, who's your favorite? Maybe Evie Oddly. Mm, Evie is good. Let's start with Evie Oddly. And to describe Evie, she's. I mean, I guess the name's probably a little self-explanatory, but she is very like kooky and weird and she can kind of get into like horror a little bit so um what else should we start with evie oddly <laughs> evie oddly versus brooklyn we are not a brooklyn heights fan in this i'm sure this Brooklyn's household great. is not evie oddly. i think she's just not our cup of tea at all she's kind of like the opposite of what we look for in a drag queen i think explain but- more like, I'm not as impressed by people who are just, like, tall and thin and have budget. I'm more interested in people who I think are kind of pushing the bounds a little bit of drag. Um, and I'm it's not... She's too generic. Yeah, I'm, I guess, okay, I'm less concerned with female impersonation. And I'm more excited about people who are strange, experimental, um really weird like i'm more interested in the like kind of club kid element i first of all i don't even remember this initial outfit i do because i remember that little race car i just didn't like it i don't yeah i don't love the dress but the race car i feel like that's so evie i didn't like it because i just i was like it looks cheap but now that i now that i'm more familiar with her style i think it makes more sense in the it like fits more into my understanding of yeah. her she's just very fun and playful like i think of like the jellyfish look for example as like a wow this like, look is incredible and like okay like for example the way she painted every part of her skin like there are some queens who would have you know they wouldn't have they would have run out of time right. or they wouldn't have thought like the color matches everything like, so well she's so detail oriented i feel like every part of her costume like encapsulates the idea she's going for yeah and like that's how you sell an outfit even an outfit that that one didn't look like expensive but like like this is not a million dollars the outfit's kind of whatever but again she freaking sells it and her feet that's what kills it for me is how good the feet are like look at ross laughing (laughs) so good i liked the witch even though i remember i remember they didn't they weren't crazy about it i remember (gasps) oh but the eyes and the fact that the like hat covers an eye it's just like so it's classic but it's still it's gonna be really different than any other girl who walks down the runway yeah just so nice I thought, so I, I liked that with this outfit, for example, that her other outfits had been very kooky and strange, and like that outfit looked like she could wear it out, and it wouldn't, people wouldn't, they would think it was cool, but they wouldn't think it was a costume, necessarily. Yeah. I also love the way she puts on her makeup. It's like she's sort of like slapping it on with her hands, but it comes out looking so cool. That's what's so amazing about some of these drag queens' makeup, is that when you watch them do it, they're just like... And then at the end, they look polished. Like, I love the ending. Look how cute she looks. The orange hat. Yeah, she's really sweet. My favorite of all time, the queen whose outfits have consistently, like, put, like, entertained or amazed me, is Valentina. Yeah. She's just, like, I feel like even people who don't, no drag race no valentina because she's just so stunning i think that she's someone who part of the appeal is that she's just so pretty she's but beautiful she's a really smart like eye for fashion valentina her makeup skills her concepts everything is just she, so she could go good. out there in a diaper and the judges would say did you stone those tights <laughs> She looks like a doll. I I loved her hometown look. I love this one. When she wore the sombrero. Also this. She looks like Natalie Portman. She looks like Natalie Portman is trying to be incognito. 
she's mm-hmm. never boring you know like she's not just like a pretty face no. like she also just like sells it what did you think too oh, yeah her oh my god her i forgot about her wedding look this is just and the judges if you hear them in the actual episode they gasp when she comes out she just it's so perfect like the the three-quarter sleeve and the giant train of her veil i loved this so this is the challenge where aja rips her to shreds and are untucked and i actually think this is a great look i love the hair i loved the lingerie look oh me too also her padding is like flawless and when we say padding for those who don't know rupaul drag race terminology it's the padding that um drag queens use to like shape their bodies so to add hips or breasts or like whatever they're using or butts judges will they'll notice if the padding it looks off right right or if it's like bulky it's hard it's hard to like make because it's it's like it's like foam basically so like you're basically you're cutting out chunks of foam it's hard putting it in some pantyhose and trying to make your body look like something it's not it's really tricky one thing i love about valentina is during all stars during one of her lip syncs when she won her challenge or um when she was in the top two her nipple came out of her top and or no maybe it was from the singing challenge and drag so normal that happens a lot but drag race like, blurred it blurred it because like, she looks because so she looks feminine. so yeah which is so funny that they were like oops that's hilarious it's and then like, and then no brilliant. no sensor in the back at all like tucked as all heck look me too the that hair, hair with the flowers in it and the the her. over john eyelashes so the other thing i like about valentina is when she does her eyebrows she draws them to look like barbie eyebrows mm-hmm. have you noticed that mm-hmm. where they like don't they don't look like um they don't look like adult human eyebrows they literally are drawn on like doll eyebrows and it was such a shame she went home in this look because this look is it's iconic oh valentina okay so moving on trixie mattel i feel like her looks i feel like i don't love trixie's makeup all the time but it's so characteristically trixie that i can't even comment on it that being said her taste in clothing and in wigs is impeccable. Starts outfit. So she came out in roller skates, and she was the first one. I, I also love how she's always pink. So cute. I liked this like ugly, the ugliest dress one. I'm like, it's not even ugly. Like I would wear this. This looks like some. It looks like something Ellie Diamond would wear. Yeah, it does. It's so sweet. It's really sweet. Mm, let's skip through. Oh, oh I loved this one with the big parasol i don't know why this feels very anime to me because i think with the doll eyes like that Mm -hmm. but that's what i like about drag race is like it doesn't (gasps) oh i love this one when they all had to do the cans i think this was i think this was one of the stupidest challenges on drag race that they had to be a type of can i don't remember this challenge it was so it was ridiculous hmm I love this one. I think she made this. Okay, this I love. So this is all one piece, the top and the bottom like that. And then this is like, I think this is a it's so part of the cute wig. and vintage and everything just like looks so good together. The fact she used red books, red glasses. I think the other thing about it is that she's not known for having really sexy looks. And that was a hotter look while still being her it's different for her. I really appreciate, like, I know everyone roasted Derek Barry when she drew on her eyebrows and stopped being Britney, and then she went home that episode after RuPaul had told her to try something new, but I appreciate when Queen, because it's when they try something different. Yeah, because I, as a human being, know how hard it is to do anything that's not, doesn't yeah. come naturally to me. That being said, though, I don't, like, even though Trixie doesn't necessarily have, like, the same sexy style that, like, Valentina does or, like, Violet Tchotchke, she still, I feel like, does wear outfits that are, like, shaped to her, you know, body yeah, type that and, one like, wears like, things that are fitted and... That was so short. That was so much shorter than she would normally wear. Like, her butt cheeks were out. 
I think that was really nice to see that she made a comment. On <laughs> Caroline's like, okay. Kimchi is one of my favorites of all time. Kimchi has beautiful makeup. Oh, she skated. Beautiful clothing, but she cannot walk in heels. How come she can skate so well? She can't skate that well. I think they, I, wait, I think they all had to skate. I don't think it was a choice. I, I remember <gasps> oh, Bob skating. Oh, this look with the mask. She's like Pablo Picasso. I love this. And also, um, wait, go to the one of her in the moon. Oh, it's the makeup for me. Like, kimchi wow. just is like, no one can do makeup like kimchi. Okay, this one. When she wore the dress for her mom. This one is so pretty on her nails so then she was a flower here because this is the look that they had to make it was a three-part challenge the first one was two looks that you brought with you and the first one was you were a baby mm -hmm. and the second one was like an ode to your mom and then the third one was you had to make it out of books and so that's why she had the little flower sprout in her head because she was a flower in the end yeah so just for reference she made this in like how many days do they have to make these like maybe a few days i don't know days. but it's it's incredible I do Shay. Besides the fact that Shay Coulee has like beautiful style and is just beautiful, she also has the best personality. Oh. Oh my god. Ha Can you even show this? <laughs> Love getting comments. Really? I don't know if this is ASMR anymore. <laughs> oh, I forgot about this look. The butterfly. Like this. Okay, I, they said it looked really crafty. I thought it looked really nice. Like, yeah, I disagree. I think it's with the Duchess. I don't think it looks crafty at all. She literally was in a cocoon, and then she came <gasps> out and she had a dress, and then she came out and she had wings. I think it's because the colors are so neon, and it's very Lisa Frank, and which it wings. was supposed to be. It was supposed to be like Lisa Frank. They were mad about the wings, but the wings had to pop out. Oh, I love this look. Me too the 60s the watering can that matches the outfit with the really tall hair with the little scarf over it the shape and like how cute and short it is like a little baby doll dress the little glasses oh it's adorable i love it this i didn't i didn't love this one so basically this oh wait no i do i remember raja during the roast challenge on her season she wore a like carry inspired dress that had a bucket and then like the blood was coming down and then the blood was her hair and so she so shay wore this look which was remember when during the finale when sasha Bolor had the rose petals mm -hmm. in her wig so she did the same thing as the rose as the like blood look but with the rose petals Oh, this this is all stars. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, so she so she did that as a ode to like one of the worst nights for her, which was really smart. So, yeah, I didn't love the dress as much, but the hair piece is just it's just incredible. Like, look at the petals on her wig, just so good. Oh, I loved this like. I like this one too. Yeah, I love the um. What's it called? Her, also, her hair looks so cute. The, the, the like, tool scarf. Yeah. It. I love the airbrush t-shirt. Reminds me of, like, the fair. It's so cute. That might be a singular experience being a Mainer. The airbrush t-shirts remind me of the fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, the chaps. Look at her butt. She looks great. I also like that the gingham was, like, different types. This it's is an cool. example of like if this outfit was on any on anyone else, I probably wouldn't have liked it. Yeah, it looks so polished on her, but when you actually look at the pieces, I'm like, I think wasn't this one she made? Yeah, I think so. I think they had to make. Oh, this wasn't this her as Prince? Yeah, this is her as Prince. She looks great. The so, shoes are so good. That's the other thing I like about. I like when, like, I remember when Alaska during the like kids tv show challenge war like decided to be a boy in the challenge and the girls were like the judges aren't gonna like that and then she like got red for it and then people started to do the same thing on snatch game like they'd be like oh i want to be you know so and so and people be like oh you're gonna be a, a guy during snatch game like i don't know why they spend so many years fighting that on the show because it's like it's all transgressive it's all 
people who are assigned one gender at birth dressing as something else and so it's weird that they were so like strict about yeah so i liked that when she was dressed as prince nobody batted an eye I feel at like that point in the I, show i feel like they're finally starting slowly to catch up with the audience and with the queens the judges are starting to catch up and culture yeah. like culture is not that, like, a place where we're like yeah that like it's becoming more and more allowed to like play with gender on the show and not just be like men dressed as women like it's it's more like subtle and nuanced than that this outfit is my favorite outfit of all time on RuPaul's Drag Race I felt so torn though because all three (sighs) Jujubes, Miss Crackers, and Shay's finale looks can we just take a second to just admire it this is my favorite look. Yeah, Ew. what was that? What happened? That was his mouth. I think that was his mouth. I hope so. No, it was. He was like... Mm. Um, this is just beautiful. The the oversized shape, the gloves, the bow, her yeah, hair. I'm going to bring up Miss Cracker's Everything. finale look. Oh, I forgot about Miss Cracker. And Cracker's. do you remember... Do you remember Juju B's finale look, too? That, that was a three, great season. She was... And this was... Isn't, like, it a traditional, like, Polish? Yeah. Jewish look? I think it was Polish. And then, if you remember, her finale look for all, for um her season was this morning look because she had... Yeah. She didn't make top four. She didn't make top yeah. three. You can see the, like, intricate designs of the um, headpiece. It's just unreal. And even, like, look at her nipples. <laughs> it's so pretty. And look those... How do those pearl those pearl strands not get twisted while she's walking she keeps her head very still god like but also miss cracker is very stiff so i can imagine she would be like (laughs) do you want to react to jujubee's finale look as well and just do all three finale look yeah what was jujubee's you you don't remember any of this no this was i was (laughs) gagged okay here and I forget who she's supposed to be, but she said it was a goddess that was like in a picture on her wall growing up. What better way to cel- than to celebrate me, my family, my heritage, and my spirituality than to dress as a person I want to be? Like that is like... <laughs> in the latest episode, in the last episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 5, Juju B sashayed down the main stage wearing an immaculate orange gold and nude ensemble that paid homage to the Hindu god whose paintings were all over her household while growing up. Just so cool. So and like, it it like makes me emotional to think like, you know, she was growing up and like looking at this like beautiful god and then she thought for her finale look she would yeah. transform into like that's so... I think it's big. I think one of the most beautiful things about Drag Race is like so many of these queens who grew up like queer and grew up different than everyone else have so much trauma around family, around their upbringing, and seeing the way that queens kind of take their childhood or take certain aspects of their lives that have maybe been hard or difficult and reclaiming them and like working through that trauma by making something so beautiful on the runway as like an homage to their childhood her drag has always been an amalgamation of all the women in her life grandmother aunts and sisters and this is a quote so of course they're laotian i want to be the idea of what a great mother would be i talk about my relationship with my mother and i didn't really have one for that long she said referring to how her mother left her and her two sisters following the death of their father Mm-hmm. So I wanted Juju B to be this superwoman, this person who just spreads love. Like I feel like that. What was that was what was so impactful about that finale because you have Shay dressing as her mom going to prom. Mm-hmm. Then you had Miss Cracker who's dressing as like a Polish doll, I think. And then you have Juju B dressing as a Hindu god. So you have all three of them pulling from culture, culture and like history and family to transform themselves during this like really pivotal moment in their yeah, lives yeah. like that's the power of of drag race and of drag it Not just like just drag it race. just like hits really different the like fashion and drag race like it hits so different than if you're watching like a runway or you're watching america's next top model 
because yeah. you know the stories and the backgrounds of these individuals are like yeah just really powerful it's yeah it's a different kind of show yeah and she's talking about in this article which maybe we should link below she's talking about how also one of her big like people that she looked up to is angina who is filipino and talking about how representation was important because she was like oh there's a space for me as an as an asian queen on this show mm-hmm. so this is so cool okay we can move on. <laughs> we're getting really deep into this. so many queens were just not i don't think we would have the time to talk through all of them like we just passed by tatiana oh alaska's oh. candy couture candy couture her like um what is it called cotton candy <laughs> cotton candy outfit is honestly one of my favorites it's so fucking cute i can't believe it was on season five and also katya yeah. her um her like 70s lesbian tracksuit look mm-hmm. with those like hideous yellow heels with the brown it's just like so cool it's just elevated and somehow. the hair i love her and the, style. like almost like mock neck so if you don't know drag race or katya katya's drag persona is a russian sex worker and she out of like all the queens i feel like is most true to her character in her different runways like it's always like russian themed we love katya in this household we go up that oh roxy's this is stunning what's this was we go up this was her um this is her all-stars two no go back down this is her all-stars two finale look it's just so it's gorgeous it's just so gorgeous 1920s like nude just like just like pin up roxy knows how to wear a dress like she knows how to make clothes she knows she knows a lot about like construction okay i did want to put in this i love the violet trashki leather and lace like kink look i don't love this one. Oh, it's so smart and i love like her face like she's just so okay well i think you should include it because i love it you're talking about detoxes black and white finale it looks like she is in a black and white film. How did she do this? Like, all of her makeup is grayscale. Like, Kim Chi's look that's black and white, it's just black and white. Like, this is, her lips are a shade of gray, and her, like, eyebrows painted, are a different shade. She painted her whole body. She painted her legs, her hands, her chest. And all of her jewelry. Like, mm-hmm. look at, like, her rings and her necklace. Like, it's all, and the wig, it's all gray. Do you think? she had someone like like spray her do you think that's how they did it like like a spray like tan, a spray tan but, but it just be- makes you like gray <laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh i love this violet charge look oh i love it it's just so cute i just love all the pink outfits okay i will say those little stockings are wicked cute and this is sweet look at her little puffy shoes she's so cute looks like a doll look at those like latex glove hands so pretty okay and her like her makeup looks like twiggy she's like the bottom her hair is like kind of like a silver pink color it's just like so well done love and sharon needles post-apocalyptic drag this is the first time i think anyone in drag race history had like a mouth gag so she was walking down and she was like and then she had like fake blood come out of her mouth yeah. and that's more common now where queens like we saw taste just did it tasted it like three times yeah. on drag race uk season two but for context like in this season season four and like the earlier seasons of drag race girls were coming out in outfits that looked like something you could get from forever 21 or even just like more feminine looks overall yeah like season three you had raja who was pushing the limit but she was still more feminine but that still wasn't the majority of the queens no so for her for sharon to come out this is first episode first episode to come out in this like shaped very high fashion looking outfit that is also apocalyptic also spooky also creepy so they made them right this was a this was a sewing challenge and to not look costumey like i remember the judges were just so shook and then she opened her mouth at the end and blood came out so this was a challenge i loved as a obsessive fan over death becomes her mm-hmm. starring meryl streep goldie hawn and bruce willis 
and they had to do different looks based on like how they would die so we we first saw violet's waist during the air like the flight attendant challenge they like were like tighter 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 and they're like wrapping it around her waist but then this was like a oxygen oxygen tank. tank look and her waist was so teensy and i just thought that was like she showed off her best asset while also fulfilling the challenge. Wasn't Violet also, um, oh, someone's staring at them. Good morning. <laughs> this is Raja, and it reminds me of the Madonna Vogue, like MTV Music Awards. Mm-hmm. I love look. this one. And it's like Marie Antoinette. I will say we should include this just for the gag of it, but this I don't think is that incredible now, but I remember the judges like everyone like culture stopped when this happened which is yeah violet tchotchke fall fashion week season seven episode one animal kingdom couture you know what we should include as our last like showcase outfit that we want to talk about what got mix little black dress Okay, yeah. It's just... Iconic. I think, too, like, if I was going to do a little black dress, I was thinking you would do three little black dresses. And I think this was smart with the, like, nipple coverings with the one little... He's looking a fan. You have to imagine. It's got to be cold in there because there's so many people in wigs and, like, heavy outfits that they're probably air conditioning the living heck out of that space. It's like five minute runway i don't think they have to do it twice oh really and they have to stand out there in that outfit while the judges critique every single girl and then they cut down the critique runway twice so they do the runway and then they do it again and then the judges react to it and say all their funny one-liners so they get to see it before like they're not Uh, it's not like rupaul is like that's the littlest black dress i've ever seen oh that's interesting yeah, I, I just love this outfit. I think, like, it's also, like, the little black dress is so, like, stereotypically female. And for Gottmik to, like, take this interpretation also is, like, such a fuck you to, like, I don't know, this very... Yeah, I think also, like, Gott has really... It seems like Gott is really, like, stoked about showing off, like, his chest. I say Gott, like, actually got the person and not got the drag Mm -hmm. queen and i think that's also really cool that we're seeing somebody with like top surgery scars like i can see for the first time ever i could see people like i could see some someone who's not as confident like not or not even not Mm -hmm. as confident but maybe a bit more body shy not having not wanting that to be associated with their brand so I, i think that's really neat okay and then last one and then i'll be done utica's sleeping bag yes. look for the bag ball I feel like Utica I mean we obviously need to finish this new season but I feel like Utica for me is going to be up there in some of the best outfits of RuPaul's Drag Race she's just so yeah. she's so unique she's so clever her makeup's beautiful her makeup skills are beautiful she's also an incredible seamstress she made this entire gown she helped out everyone else sleeping bags can you imagine putting that through? Yeah, it's like in our heater. Can you imagine putting a sleeping bag through a sewing machine? No, it's notor- apparently it's notoriously difficult, according to RuPaul. I don't think it was RuPaul. I don't think RuPaul is a big seamstress, is she? She makes all of her own outfits. No, she doesn't. <laughs> <She's joking. laughs> So that concludes our uh, review of RuPaul's Drag Race fashion. Um, excuse our doc. I don't know how relaxing this has been, but hopefully it was fun and entertaining. I loved having you on. Maybe I'll bring you back. We'll see how people respond to this. Um, I'm an ASMR star. Do you feel like now that I've started doing ASMR videos, you have a greater appreciation for it? I've always had an appreciation for asmr because i've seen how much it helps you with like anxiety and like insomnia and it obviously helps a lot of people i think there's a lot of misconceptions about asmr Mm -hmm. and so i definitely have like been i've i've seen that a lot of those are wrong through dating you and 
yeah, I hope, I mean, it's cool that your videos help people. Yeah. That's very sweet. It's cool. There's like literally so many things we can talk about within like RuPaul's Drag Race. There's yeah. like endless, endless things to talk about. So we'll have to come back for another episode, RuPaul let, episode. Yeah, let us know if you'd like us to go through some of the most iconic lip syncs <gasps> of Drag Race. Or even like drama moments like we, there's so much to I'd talk love, about i'd love to do both of those so or if you have other suggestions adjacent to rupaul's drag race well thanks for watching and hope you enjoy